Today I'm going to be taking a look at this 1967 Beetle Cabrio. Recently we've noticed the door gaps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, so much so that it's actually getting quite difficult to close the offside door. Crunk. So I need to take a look at that and see what's going on. <laughs> this is the driver's door gap, or the near side actually, it's a left hand drive car. You can see how big the gap is at the top, and then watch as we come down, it gets quite a lot smaller towards the bottom. Let's check out the passenger side. This is the passenger side, or the off side, as I said, left hand drive car. The gap is huge at the top, look, and then gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So that is something we definitely need to address. Look how big it is. I can get my little pinky in there. So what is it that's causing our door gaps to get bigger and bigger and bigger? The body itself is really good. The structure underneath is really good. For its age, it's absolutely fantastic. It's only had very small amounts of welding. Being a cabrio, there's no roof, so there's no strength or structure there. So they are renowned for the backs dropping quite a bit. Now, the only thing I can think of are the rear body mounts. Um, I should think that the rubber themselves are probably quite worn by now and quite compressed. So that's where we're gonna start. Just as I suspected, those rear body mounts are really compressed. I've no idea how old they are, but we definitely need to change those and start there. The new body mounts are quite a lot thicker. Let me show you. So here's our rear body mount here. As you can see, it's quite thin, almost the same sort of depth as the the bodywork itself. So it's an insulator between the body and the chassis to stop vibration and obviously in this case to space the door gaps. Now here's the new one, much much thicker. So with our body mount removed I can now pop a lever bar in and we can see the movement between the body and the chassis which is quite a lot. And now I can check out yeah, it's a direct relationship between that gap here and the door gaps. I can actually see the door gap getting smaller as I'm levering the body up. So we're going to fit our brand new body mounts, but we may even have to put some spaces in there as well. I think it's been running around on those flat old body mounts for some time. The body's actually moved. So let's see how we go anyway. Let's get the new ones in and then see where the gap is. So our new rear body mount fitted. It's a lot thicker than the one that I took out that had been compressed for some time. So it's made a massive improvement on our door gaps, but I still think I can get those gaps even better by adding a spacer. So I'm gonna add a spacer and see how good we can get those door gaps. Check out the door gap now. Look at that, much more even. And I think you'll agree, for a convertible Beetle, that is really, really good. As you can see, that's our new body mount fitted and I've popped a washer in as well. Uh, I've done the same both sides, so let's see what difference that's made. And now the door shuts really well again. Got rid of that horrible clunkiness. It's lining up properly. Now I can crack on with the job that I actually intended to do in the first place, and that is replace the door rubbers on both sides because they're quite perished and old now. And these rubbers on these quarter windows as well. Um, these actually meet the window frames on the front. So what I wanted to do was obviously make sure the door gaps were correct before I fitted the rubbers and found that they didn't fit properly. Now when I've got a good gap in, I can get cracking with those. As you can see, I've got our rubber onto the uh, rear quarter window. Now I slid this up using a little bit of maintenance spray. It slides in from the bottom, so just make it a little bit easier with a little bit of uh, lubricant. Up it slid all the way to the top. Now it has a fixing screw and a little plate that fits up inside the rubber and the screw goes through into the frame. Now I've marked the screw hole with a piece of masking tape and a pen just so I know where the hole is and then with a sharp screwdriver I've pushed through the front of the rubber and through the back of the rubber so we've got a hole all the way through. Then when I slide the little plate up inside I can put the screw through the outside of the rubber and then try and sort of stretch this rubber over the top of the screw head and then it's hidden. Um, the only other way you can do it is by trying to pop the screw up through the centre, um, but I found that you can end up splitting the rubber doing that. So hence why uh, I found it a bit easier by popping the screw right the way through the front. 
So here we have our new rubber fitted to that rear quarter window. I'm just going to check that it lines up with the door okay. Which it does, look at that, that's beautiful. So next I can do the other side, then after that we can replace the door aperture seals. So this is the driver's side door aperture seal and you can see it's pretty uh, old and uh, fatigued now so it's time for a new one. We're going to peel this off and then da -da, fit our nice new one. Looking forward to getting that on there. Uh, as you can see it's sort of uh, covered in a, a white powder. I think that's called Bloom actually. Uh, that will clean off and it will be lovely and black once I've uh, cleaned it off with some either some alcohol, some brake cleaner, something like that. Right and it's also, oh it's got a little L on the side for, for left. Look at that, lovely. So let's pop off the old door aperture seal and pop on the new one. Yeah, okay, it might not be as easy as that, but um, stay tuned, let's find out. So let's get into it. Let's get that old aperture seal off and get the new one on. That's the old seal removed with some help from my friend, the heat gun, which helped me soften up the glue. And then I was able to use this beautiful plastic gasket scraper, which took the glue and the remnants of that old seal off. Now it's time to clean up the new seal, clean all that, all that bloom off with a bit of solvent to get it back to black. And then we can fit that. Well, we're gonna trial fit it first. I'm not just gonna glue it straight away. I'm gonna fit it in place and make sure it fits. That's our new door aperture seal fitted. I was really pleased with how that went. It fitted in the channel really nice. I haven't even glued it yet. That's just it in position. I left the door closed overnight just to compress those seals as they're a little bit spongy. So we're going to test it now and see what the door's like now. Hopefully it'll be absolutely spot on. Ooh, that feels better straight away. It didn't spring out as much. Perfect. And the only little bit I needed to glue was the very top. The rest of it I've left because it's such a beautiful fit. I didn't want to put any glue in it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and then you won't miss out on any future videos. Thank you and we'll see you next time.